We're nearing the end of winter and this is what my hay barn looks like. Does yours look like this too? Because if so, I've got a tip for you. It's hay day. Uh, behind me, you can see that I barely have any bales left. It's getting delivered and stacked in just a couple of hours. And so what I like to do is clean up the floor and I'm gonna carry out all of that fallen hay. I'm not gonna give it to my animals. Let me show you what I do with it. How I actually turn it into fresh grass for my pastures. Okay, I've got my four-wheeler hooked up here with a wagon on the back and I'm just gonna start scooping into the four-wheeler wagon. I'm gonna drive it up the hill past the stable area and that's where the sacrifice plot is. I don't think a lot of people realize when it comes to hay that it's filled with seed. Um, that's why I don't use it in my garden. I mean, in theory, you could use well-rotted hay as mulch in your garden. But speaking from experience, it's gotta be so well-rotted and I don't wanna run that risk. I don't want to be a grass farmer in my raised beds. So instead, I put this on um, bare spots in a sacrifice plot here at the end of the winter. Right now, it's uh, mid-February and it's gonna have time to break down. It keeps the soil covered, which is good for permaculture reasons. Um, but also, it's got seed in it. And that seed, essentially, is like another layer of grass seed going over the field here. All right, so this is my sacrifice plot. At this point in the season, it's bare dirt. Hey, Orsa. If you're unfamiliar, a sacrifice plot is essentially a place that you allow the animals to have movement, get out in the open, get out of their buildings, get exercise, which is all really important for health, breathing, preventing colic in horses. Um, but by having this designated space, I'm not opening them up to movement on the rest of my pastures. If I did, it would all look like this. And as a permaculture farmer, that breaks my heart. I hate exposed soil, it degrades the land. So now I'm reducing all of that to just one small area. And that's what the sacrifice plot is for. Axlu here, it's an Anatolian Shepherd. So what I'm gonna do, watch out buddy, is just sprinkle this and create um, a couple of inches worth of covering. Here's my feet, I'm just literally throwing clumps on the ground. Much faster way would be to dump this and just rake it out. I broke my rake. <laughs> There's one load. That's a lot from one load. Okay, I got it all. And the hay people aren't here yet, so that's good. Um, I'm gonna go truck this up to the sacrifice plot. It's warming up, it's the middle of February. I'm putting in my cover crop for my pastures in about three weeks, uh, very beginning of March. And so this is gonna create a great mulch to overseed my cover crops into. Stay tuned, I'll do a video on cover crops and why I choose what I do. Uh, but you can also pre-order my book, The Sustainable Homestead. I give a big chart and I talk about preferred forage and different cover crop forages for your stock. Okay, let's go get this last one dropped. Hi, excuse me. Come on, let's go. I gotta pull my four-wheeler through. Back, back. Oh, okay, we're in a mare moment. Go, back, back. Good girl. Thank you. Okay, here's how much I got done. All right, now it's time to drive the wagon back, the four-wheeler back, put it away, close the horse gate, and look at that. All that hay is stacked, and the hay got moved out just in time.